teaching a, a class for the last several weeks on uh, Sunday mornings at the 9 o'clock service, and uh, God decided to preach this morning instead, and so I didn't get to, and I'm not going to right now um, because uh, that's not what I'm supposed to do, but I am supposed to share a revelation uh, from his word that he gave me this morning that would have been part of my preaching. So um, this morning, during the 9 o'clock service, the Lord had me speak out a word to you all about, uh, and, and I'm going to repeat it because some of you weren't here. And if I'm going to share this word, you need to hear what I said um, because you need to set yourself in a place. And I, I think that, that what God has already done this morning in our 1030 service has, has prepared you for this, but I still want you to hear. Um, we have a tendency uh, to base our value who we are, you know, we, this world, we talk a lot about self-esteem, about, you know, self-worth, and, you know, everybody's about, it, it's all, we all, we're looking at ourselves, and uh, we get our value based on our experiences, what life's done to us, uh, what's happened to us, good or bad, and we value ourselves based on that. So if bad things have happened in our life, then our value goes down. And if good things have happened in our life, then our value goes up. And if we're smart in something, then our value goes up. But if we're not very smart, then our value goes down. And if we're good at something, it goes up. And if we're not so good at it, then it goes down. And we're affected by our surroundings and what happens. We're affected by what people say about us or how other people perceive us. But the Lord told me this morning to let everybody know that he's not affected by that. He doesn't value you based on the same value system that you value yourself. He values you based on himself. Because he valued you so much that he gave the greatest sacrifice he could think of. Himself. He put himself in a position on this earth. Because we know we get all confused with, you know, the God Father, God Son, God Holy Spirit and all that. We get confused with that. But God put himself in the flesh on the earth. And he stripped himself of all of what made him God to become a man. And when he did that, when he came to the point of the cross, he purposely, for your sake, took on every sin. You know, when we're talking about self-worth, we, we typically carry the guilt and the shame and, and stuff of what we've done. And it, even an unbeliever, somebody who's never been introduced to Christ, they're walking around carrying that guilt and that shame. You don't have to tell them that they're wrong because they already know it. They feel it. They, they're, they know that I'm dirty and ugly and, and unhappy on the inside, and, and I can put on a face and pretend it's okay on the outside, but, but it doesn't go away on the inside. But he took all of that, the weight that you feel when, when, because you've done something you shouldn't do, he took all that weight from every person that's ever lived and that's ever going to live, and he carried and, and bore that burden of all the weight as a sacrifice for you. So when he values you, he values you enough to do that for you, to sacrifice himself who's perfect and pure and holy and has no faults and no sin to take on yours. And the reason it's so important for you to understand that God values you so much is because when you talk about having faith in him, which is what I've been speaking about, when we talk about how to use our faith and that we have faith, we have to understand that we're having faith in God who has value in us. He sees value in us. Because if you, can't, if you can't understand that God sees value in you, that he really, really loves you and he sees value in you despite what you might see in yourself, then you can't receive the things he has for you. You'll constantly think you don't deserve them. And even when they're put right in front of you, you'll, you'll walk away from them because you don't think you deserve them. So the only scripture, well, actually, I, I'll take that back. There's two scriptures I'm going to read, but the one that I'm going to um, talk about is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And if you have been in this church for any length of time, you've probably heard this scripture. And of course, if you've been a Christian for any length of time, I hope you've heard this scripture. It says, but without faith, 
It is impossible to please him, God, for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, I don't know about you, but you know, you hear that scripture, and sometimes because of our self-worth issue, our, our self-esteem issue, we start wondering um, whether our faith pleases God, or whether we can even please God. We, we start looking at our, our uh, actions and our attitudes to base on whether we're pleasing God, and so then we start getting into condemnation over the fact, well, I couldn't be pleasing God, and we get all messed up. But as I was reading this this morning, the Lord just put in my heart, okay, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Okay. But he that comes to God must believe that he is. Now, all of us believe that he is, right? Yes. You believe that God is. Okay, let me, let me share a scripture with you. That's not faith. Believing that God is is not faith. James chapter 2, verse 19 says, you believe that there is one God. You do well. The devils also believe and tremble. If believing in God pleased God, then the devils would be pleasing him. But they're not. Believing in God is not faith. It's the next part that makes it faith. You must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You must believe that he'll do it for you. You must believe that he will, 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 that he will. You must believe that he wants to reward you. You must put aside all of that stupid stuff that makes you think, oh, I don't know if I can please God because look, I messed up here and look, I'm bad here and look, I don't know how I'm ever going to do it here. You've got to set all that stuff aside because it doesn't matter and it doesn't affect your faith. What affects your faith is do you believe that the God who is will for you? He will for you. His word says it, so he will, he will, he will. And not just that he will for you. But did he will for me? Yes. See, because it's easy to go, oh, okay, I'll pray for you so that you can get healed. I'll pray for you so that you can get delivered. But I don't deserve it. No. Your faith comes in when you believe that he is a rewarder and that he wants to reward you. Yes. He loves you. That sacrifice he did on the cross, he did it for you. There's, there's a, a song that uh, they often play at funerals, and I'm not a singer. I'm not going to sing it, but I've always liked it. When he was on the cross, you were on his mind. He would have done it if you were the only person living on the planet because he loves you. You have to believe that he is a rewarder, and he wants to reward you. He will, he will, he will, he will. This is where faith comes in. The devils believe that he is. The devils know that God is. They don't have any problem with it. They don't like it. It makes them tremble because they know that their time is coming. But they believe them that he is. That's not good enough. You've got to believe that he will for you. You got to believe that when the word says that you are healed by his stripes, that that word was written for you, that he will for you. You have to believe that when the word says that he will take care of all of your needs, that that word was written for you. For you. It was written for you. That's your word. You have to believe that when it says that you can have joy, that you can be a peacemaker, that you can walk in righteousness and live in victory, that that word was written for you. That's your word. He will, he will, he will, he will for you. Amen? That was the revelation that the Lord gave to me, and I believed with all my heart that it could not miss today. 
It had to be said today. And if you know anybody that's not here that didn't get to hear this, you get them a CD, even if all they listen to is this part right here. Because you need to know and you need to make sure that everybody that you know, because you know a lot of people that believe in God. But they don't believe he will for them. They don't believe he will for them. Maybe you don't, but you better. That's faith. That's what pleases him. He will for you. He loves you, and he will for you. He wants to reward you. He's a God of blessing, not cursing. Yeah, there's a curse, but it's not yours. You're redeemed from the curse. That word was written for you. That's your word. You're excluded from the curse. When we read Psalm 91 this morning, and it says that 10, 000, a thousand will fall at your right hand and 10,000 at your left hand, but it shall not come near you. That's your word. That word was written for you. If you don't get anything else out of what God has done here this morning, because God has done some great things, and he's preached some great things, and I don't know if pastor's going to go on and preach some more. That's up to him. But if you don't get anything else, you need to get that. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Faith pleases him. And what pleases him is when you know he'll do it for you. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to bend over backwards and do all kinds of spiritual things to please him. You just have to believe that he will for you. Amen? Amen?